following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back, and you are comfortably zoned with me, the Zigzag Man, in Alameda, right across the bay from San Francisco, and across the moat from Oakland, in the northern part of California. What I do is special. I push on the doors of life, Mark Pohl, by calling attention to how we're being ripped off by what I call the unholy trinity. It is organized religion, government, and big business. And I also talk a lot of ball. I generally speak with the most interesting folks on the planet. It just works out that way. Um, Today is going to be a a bit of a special show. In response to, um, I guess you still call him President, President Trump, his remarks, uh, anti-Semitic remarks at that, um, declaring himself the chosen the chosen one and declaring that all Jews that vote Democratic are disloyal. Well, boy, that sent some shivers up up my spine because I'm kind of a history buff and uh, I look back to pre-war Germany and they were saying things, Hitler was saying things that really echoed those remarks Um, I wanted to find out what other Jews thought of his remarks, and I solicited the help of three of my fellow podcasters at uh, the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and they happen to be Jewish, and um, here's what they thought. Jerry Feidelberg. Here I am, another disloyal and ignorant person called out by the president. Uh, It was interesting to hear what he had to say. Uh, Being called disloyal is something that Hitler did back in the 30s. And people uh, have always felt that Jews living in their countries were not loyal to their countries, and they used it as an excuse to expel them from the country, or worse, put them into concentration camps as Hitler did during World War II. It's a sad state of affairs that uh, Trump called out Democrats uh, who voted for uh, Democrats, that Trump could call out the Jews that voted for Democrats, and 79% of them voted for democratically in the uh, election in 2018 that they were disloyal and by voting for uh, Democrats, they were also hurting Israel. And of that 79% that voted, I'll bet you about 95% of them are strong supporters of Israel. Also keep in mind, in 1948, Harry Truman, who was a Democrat, was the first person and it was the president who recognized Israel as a country. And uh, there's always been great support from for Jews for Israel, whether they're both uh, Republicans and or Democrats, for the last 70-plus years since the start of the uh, country of Israel. So that's what I have to say. That, that's beautiful, Jerry. And I uh, thank you for being part of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. Adios. Oh, and that's it. Okay, bye. Jeff Coleman. Hello, Ralph. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. I'd like your response to what Mr. Trump said regarding Jewish people and their political beliefs. 
Well, aside from the fact that his knowledge of Jewish people and, pol and their political beliefs is on a par with his knowledge of animal husbandry, to name one example, I would have to say in all fairness that taking Trump seriously about Jewish people is like taking Anton Mesmer seriously about medicine. Okay. Were you particularly offended by this time, by these remarks, and is there anything that offended you more about Trump? Well, well, in all seriousness, if this had happened early in his 2016 presidential campaign, I probably would have been highly offended. But we're talking now about a man who not only shoots from a lip, but a man who is basically like the gun that fires before anyone bothers to check if there's a bullet in there. We're talking about a guy who's a, who has the constitutional knowledge of a pygmy and a guy whose sense of the world goes no farther, really, than the tip of his nose. How dangerous is he? Now, the fact that he... Ha the fact, well, he's only as, he is only as dangerous as people allow him to be. Remember, this is a guy who thinks he can do what he bloody well pleases because the Constitution tells him so, which proves to me that, among other things, he's never read Article 2 of the Constitution in any great length. Okay, I'm, he's I'm only ask you one more. He's only I'm dangerous gonna... as long as people let him. Okay, do you see an analogy to what's happening, and this is my final question of you, to what's happening now to pre-war Hitler Germany? I don't see it yet. That's not to say that it can't happen here, because we've learned, if we've learned nothing else from history, we've learned that anything can happen and often does. Right now, it's worth keeping an extremely wary eye upon, but I don't see America turning into pre-war Germany quite yet. Like I said, I don't, I don't say it can happen, but I don't see it happening right now. Right now, all I see happening is a president with a big mouth and the brain of a turnip shooting his mouth off. And unfortunately, because he holds the office, people take him seriously. Well, they, and unfortunately, they report every transgression along the way, knowing that half oh, he, of what they he don't, does is bullshit. He, we don't need, quote, them to report every transgression. His addiction to Twitter tells you that the president is capable of doing that all by his lonesome. Yeah. We don't well, need the press to report his transgressions. He does that admirably on his own. Let's hope he implodes. Thank you, Jeff Coleman, and um, we'll be back at you. Peter Golenbach. Yes, this is this is Peter Golenbach, and you wanted me to talk about my reaction to uh, our president, our white yes, supremacist, sir. racist president, uh, who is incapable of a kind word ever. In fact, the only thing that he's capable of is hatred and building hatred and trying to uh, bring about hatred. And what he did by saying that any Jew who will vote Democratic obviously is somebody who hates Israel, um, you know, that's, that's the most absurd thing that I've ever heard of. I mean, the two people who I feel hate Israel the most are, are Trump and Netanyahu the policies that Netanyahu have engendered over in Israel, uh, really more than anything else, engenders more hatred from American Jews than anything I can think of. You know, rather than trying to, after so many years, make some sort of uh, negotiation with the Palestinians, uh, which was certainly possible uh, until Trump came along, uh, basically Netanyahu has decided that there will only be a one-state solution and so Israel will basically battle their, quote, enemies till time immemorial. And, and it's, it's really kind of a terrible thing. Both those people uh, really are uh, patrons of hatred. They see no benefit in negotiating with anybody. Uh, we, we have a president 
who loves dictators. He loves Putin. Uh, he loves the fellow from North Korea. He loves the Saudi guy who killed our journalists. Uh, he loves the Filipino guy. Um, he has no use whatsoever from any of our true allies. Um, France, I've, England. <laughs> right. Crazy. I mean, I, I've just finished writing a book with Richard Painter, uh, the eminent, the eminent uh, uh, attorney who was the ethics. He was in charge of ethics for, believe it or not, the George W. Bush administration, which was kind of funny because any time they wanted to do something unethical, they figure out some way not to tell Richard about it. Uh, but we wrote this book <laughs> called American Nero, which basically is a history of uh, the rule of law in America and how it has been, you know, sort of broken, uh, you know, including obviously the Civil War, including uh, putting uh, Japanese in internment camps, in including uh, McCarthyism. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And yet our conclusion is that this current president has has damaged the rule of law in America worse than any president in our history. Uh, in fact, is this we are, beyond what we can come back from? No, nothing is beyond what we can come back from. But what we have to do is get rid of this guy and get rid of his, uh, you know, his his bootlicking uh, core of of, of incompetent, um, you know, bootlickers. Uh, okay. uh, Trump. Trump is only interested. Trump is only interested in how things affect Trump. I mean, he has no interest whatsoever about how they really affect the world. Um, when he Can was, you in, predict an end game to all of this? You you really can't. I mean, the the, the really only end game in all of this is defeating him in the polls in 2020. That's really the only end game in any of this. You know, okay. unless somehow his you know his hamburger and French fry eating should should lead to something else, uh, but because of Mitch McConnell, um, I mean we are we are both we are both convinced that the not only did the Russians, uh, you know seven seventeen uh, <laughs> different parts of our government uh, concluded that the Russians helped Trump win the election in 2016. And they've also concluded they are continuing to try to help Trump as best they can. But we're also convinced that the Russians have paid people like Mitch McConnell and paid people like Lindsey Graham millions and millions and millions of dollars to make sure that they protect Trump in such a way um, that, that um, you know, the Mueller report never gets any traction. Uh, the whole thing is so scandalous, it's beyond belief. It really is. And because of Mitch McConnell and because the Republicans control the Senate, uh, the poor Democrats right now are just spinning their wheels. Well, I'll tell you, my grandfather is spinning. He's spinning in his grave. A true patriot who came to America when he was nine years old as a little kid and um, just just would not understand if you woke him up if you could bring him back he'd be so shocked he'd plot again well he would so, understand he would understand that our president is a monster he would oh. understand he would understand that our president has no empathy for anybody has no feelings for anybody is in fact a very cruel person I mean, we're, we called our book American Nero because Nero was another one of these dictators who was very cruel to the populace of Rome. Uh, I mean, Trump, Trump, in his you know non-political life, uh, basically destroyed everybody who had anything to do with him. Uh, he would sign people up to do work for him and then not pay them, leaving many of them on the verge of bankruptcy. He oh, several small times con small contractors that couldn't well the lower him. the lower they were, the worse he treated them, which says something about who he is, and he borrowed yeah. millions and millions, maybe even a billion of dollars from Russian banks uh, because he had a couple times with both of his casinos gone bankrupt he had i think he went he went bankrupt three or four times. I mean this is the guy who's the art of the deal. 
he's basically the art of how to how to go bankrupt. But he has figured out such a way uh, that he pays off as many people as he can to keep himself from being, uh, you know, sued or or found guilty or, um, you know, in in the case of of, of the Constitution, uh, where he should have been he should have been either indicted, and, and the notion that a sitting president can't be indicted is ridiculous in my my opinion, uh, oh, or or impeached. Or impeached. I mean, I do believe that they should have impeached him. Now, I understand that after impeaching him, uh, that he could not have been found guilty because Mitch McConnell and the Republicans would not have allowed it. And, and that maybe, would fuel the fire with his base that he's being screwed. Well, perhaps, perhaps. But And maybe what the Democrats are doing right now is the right thing, which is to say to go through the steps of – doing the inquiry of the impeachment without declaring that they're impeaching him. So maybe maybe that's the right thing for them to do right now. But, you know, if anybody's listening to this podcast, uh, and if you don't vote, what you are risking if Trump should win a re-election uh, is that your democracy very well might go away. I mean, we talk about what a wonderful democracy the United States is, but it's not that anymore. I mean, it's being it's being run by a white supremacist racist who's doing everything he can to hurt uh, African Americans, to hurt Latinos, to hurt gays, to hurt Jews, to hurt anybody who's not your basic white guy. And he thinks that that's the way to run the country. And hopefully, uh, at least 60 percent of us uh, will let him know otherwise come November of 2020. Let's hope for the best. Thank you, Peter Golenbach, on behalf of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. You're very we're welcome. Gonna this, we're going to put this all together and make it one good statement as to our our Im- incredulousness. Let's put it to all of us. Well, this. I mean, every day, every day, this monster does something terrible. Now, we is it going to re- shock? To, of his lies and every his cover-ups and every day to avoid something else. A woman said that she was raped in a department store, and she's not just some woman. She's a journalist and um, a woman of very high repute. Uh-huh. And she came out and she said that she was penetrated Yep. In a department store, and she described it, and she told witnesses this was years ago, and uh-huh. the witnesses are credible, and they all remember what happened, and they all remember the shock, and it came out, and I said to Tally, for the 43rd time, this will get them? This, I mean, now it's out of the bag. And Well, when you're a dictator, happened. when you're a dictator being protected by those who care nothing about democracy, who are interested in keeping this man in office because it means that more conservative judges will be chosen and more conservative tenants will be adhered to. Um, He said, I mean, what's remarkable about this guy is a couple of things. Where he went on, you know, when, when, when he was talking to Billy Bush and telling people about how he had no problem grabbing women by the pussy, and nothing would happen because he was famous, which was just an right. amazing thing to say to somebody. And uh, then to but say, to say it privately, it's one thing to say it on tape, right. and it comes out, and they still vote for him. Could you? Well, I'm uh, having a mother or a sister or a niece or a, doesn't that affect people? Doesn't well, a, a part it, it was several things happened, obviously, <clears throat> and among them was most of what was happening with his help from the Russians. Okay. <clears throat> the Russians were on social media. Hundreds of thousands of posts were supposedly posted into the African American community and into states like Ohio and Wisconsin. Pointedly, Ohio, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Minnesota, by the Russians at the behest of Trump's people to let them know where to put these posts in, 
with the notion of disrupting the election so that these people would not vote. So the notion was the fewer African Americans and Latinos who vote, the better chance Trump has to win. And it worked. It absolutely worked. Now, of course, uh, uh, you know, the FBI director didn't help either when he went on uh, on on the air a few days before the election to talk about Hillary Clinton's emails. That didn't help either. Um, it, it was a com uh, 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 the same James Comey, the James same Comey. James Comey that yep. Trump fires, and yep. when he was fired, wasn't that in itself? You're an attorney, obstruction yep. of justice. And that should have been checkmate, end it all. Except that, according to somebody in the Department of Justice, you cannot indict a sitting president. So they said. And therefore, and therefore, if you can't indict him, you can't. You can impeach him. But if you've got a Senate that is under the control of Mitch McConnell, uh, your impeachment is not going to go anywhere because the Republicans. Okay, this one. Let this it. one other thing. He's acting so erratic compared to the overwhelming erraticism of the last two years. But even compared to that, he's going off his rocker lately. He is. He's feeling the pressure because he's getting the polls saying that all of these Democratic candidates are clobbering him uh, in, in, in these polls. And so and it's going to be interesting. And is not as and, strong as he thought it once Well, was. I mean, he, he has, as he did with his casinos. I mean, he borrowed a billion dollars to, to, to buy a casino that everybody told him wasn't going to work. I mean, there, there are stories about Trump and, and, the, and the USFL where he bought a team and the USFL was going to play in the spring because the, the idea was that if they have a league in the spring, they don't have to compete with the NFL. Well, Trump went in there and he bought this team, the New Jersey Generals, but he bought the team not with the idea of competing in the USFL. He, the idea was that he was going to have such a great team that he was going to go into the NFL. Of course, of course, the NFL told him under no circumstances would we have you as an owner. That's one thing that happened. But the other owner tried to buy Buffalo. Well, before that, but while he was in the USFL, he decided he he strong armed all the other owners to change the league to play in the fall to combat the NFL, go head-to-head -head with them. And every, 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 every single study showed that if he did that, that they were going to go bust. And they did. They played one more year, and they went bust. So Trump said, okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to sue the NFL because it's a monopoly, and we're going to make millions of dollars. And, and so Trump does this. And they go to court, and Trump testifies, and he's really the only one testifying. It's, it's sort of Trump versus the NFL. And the jury comes down with a verdict, yes, the NFL is a monopoly, and we're going to award Trump and the USFL one dollar. Oh. So Trump basically, be as owner of the U USFL New Jersey Generals, all by himself, destroys the league just right now as the way he's destroying the economy. He doesn't have the slightest idea what uh, these tariffs are going to do to the economy. The economists know. They think it's suicide. But he listens to nobody except Stephen Miller and these two other bozos who, who seem to be running the Treasury Department. And so they're going to have even stronger tariffs against the Chinese. And who pays when they're tariffs. We do. And so all the consumers in the United States are going to have to pay higher prices for the goods that they want as the stock market begins to slide. Right. Now, at what, point, at what point in the slide is the American public going to wake up and say to themselves, this guy is an absolute idiot? And that's, well, that's going to be the... I that's hope they be discover the, the death... I hope they discover the deficit the same day as they discover the slide. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, uh, he is, he's become a cult, and I've got, I've got friends. I play softball with them, and they, they love this guy. They love this guy because the Democrats hate him. That's why they love him. So this is what you got in the country right now. You've got two sides. 
where it used to be everybody was, you know, crossing the aisles and making deals and, you know, kumbaya and hugging each other and the Statue of Liberty and all that wonderful business and democracy. Now you've got a country that is rent asunder by, 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 this, by this miserable guy. Does he want to change the poetry on the Statue of Liberty? He'd like to. He'd like to do that. Sure. sure. He's uh, going to that point. Yep. Peter Golenbach, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Have a good gonna night. We're going to do a podcast real soon where we talk nothing but baseball and politics be damned. But <laughs> Sounds I'm like a good idea. Get, <laughs> I'm putting this together where uh, we could all voice our opinion and um, – I'm appreciative of your contribution. You're very if welcome. You'll stay go, on go the line. Me. I have something to chat with you about. All right. Okay. And I'm just going to tell everybody thank you. Comfortably Zone Radio Network, Peter Kohlenbach. The proceeding has been a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. You are hereby advised to keep your humor dry, your dreams wet, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting stations and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening.